You are listening to Charting Wealth's comprehensive review and forecast for the week beginning Monday, the 12th of February, 2018. We have ended the week on Friday with the S&P 500 up 1.57%. We see the NASDAQ 100, represented by the Qs, up 1.72%. We see bonds still trundling down just like we want after our weekly vertical crossover back on the 5th of January. And we see gold down 0.18%. No vertical crossover there, but we do have, we do have weekly vertical crossovers going down on the S&P 500. And you can go ahead and mark that on your calendar and on the NASDAQ 100. Confirmed weekly vertical crossovers going down for the week ending to 918. What does that mean, my friends? That means that Monday you will be prepared to look at the market around 1030 or if you want to wait for the closing of the four-hour candle, noon. But if you look around 1030, check out what the market is doing. Look at how that four-hour candle looks and check out the 30-minute candle. And if things are looking up, and again, the reason we say 1030, the market opens at 930. We want idiot hour to be over. We've explained what idiot hour is several times. It's when the market maker is in charge of the market. Once we get out of, uh, get around an hour out, many of his powers seem to be reduced or done. He, what he's doing is he's filling charts at, he's filling orders at prices that are favorable to him. And he has the ability to do that on the opening of the market. But that ends. That's why you got so much crazy volatility. You can never tell which way the market's going that first hour. But when that hour ends, around 1030, we start getting some idea as to the market stabilizing and where it might be going. If it's, if it's just pounding down and has been since the opening, then very you probably want to wait and see what it looks like around noon. But again... We don't want to jump in just to get hammered. But again, the power of the weekly vertical crossover is amazing. I'm going to ask you to do this over the weekend. I'm going to ask you to go back on the charts and look at the weekly vertical crossovers and see how they have worked and how they have worked well. And when they've been a little bit weak as far as crossing over and then going back over, I want you to look at those and the times of year when that happens, a lot of times it's in the summertime, in that summertime trading zone that we warn you about all through the summer, things are sort of sloppy. That's why, you know, we, have the, we hear that over and over, sell in May and go away, live to trade another day. Because when you're in the fall winter trading zone, like we've seen over the last many months, things are just beautiful with sustained moves or more readable moves. So, Let's jump into what is going on right now. We said weekly vertical crossover going down. Even though the market was up for the day, uh, about 1.5%, the S&P 500, and 1.72% for the Qs, we have weekly vertical crossovers confirmed at the close of the five-day, the weekly candle. We have a huge derivative oscillator going down. Price percent oscillator is smashing down. So again, that's a lot of energy sending the market in the down direction. And what are we we are not future predictors. We like to find trends and ride them. We are trend followers, trend riders, whatever you want to call yourself. So that's what we have happening. Now let's check out what's going on on the two-day chart. Of course, it's continuing to move down strongly. Again, the latest uh, two-day candle did just finish drawing, but again, it's not as strong. Wanted to see what that wick looked like. A long wick on the bottom. Not as strong as the prior two candles, but again, still going down. Now, what will we see when we look at the four-hour chart? We can see that that four-hour chart could be hitting some kind of bottom here around 258.71. Uh, so keep your eye around that 259 level. And again, if the market starts punching through that, then that tells us more. We see that the market went down as far as... I'm trying to get that candle to pull up. With the weekly vertical crossover there, it's sort of hard to do. I'm going to have to just move it out of the way. There we go. The market went down 
as low as 252.92. So just keep that in mind. Okay, that's where we are in the S&P 500. Confirmed weekly vertical crossover going down. Those of you on the mailing list, you will be receiving over the course of the weekend the notification via text message. Not like you need to know because you're listening, but you'll be getting it. Now, let's see what's going on on the queues. The queues is also confirmed. Weekly vertical crossover going down. Derivative oscillator is heating up. Again, not as much as we see with the S&P 500, but still heating up. And we see that the Price percent oscillator is heading down, not as precipitously, but, but hey, well, heading down pretty darn strong. And again, have a strong down candle with a long down wick on it. Now, as we go a little deeper, we look at the two-day chart. What do we see? Well, we see the two-day chart continuing to heat up. Actually clicked over heading at a steeper downward angle on this latest two-day chart. The wick that you see there on the two-day chart is, of course, from the up day that ended on Friday, up 1.72%. Remember, we're using Heiken Ashi candlesticks. <clears throat> Heiken Ashi candlesticks are different, <clears throat> much different from your traditional candlestick. You want to learn about them, please go to our training. Thousands of people have listened to it. I think it's the most popular one we have done. It is Heiken Ashi candlesticks. Check that out at our YouTube channel or at the website chartingwealth.com. But we see three strong down candles, and again, lots of strong downward momentum. As we look at the four-hour chart, it'll tell us a little more. Again, we see things sort of flattening out somewhere around the 153 mark or so, 154 mark maybe. So again, keep your eye on that. We've hit that basically once all the way back on the 6th. So just be cognizant of that. We do see the price percent oscillator flattening out, derivative oscillator losing energy, so we don't want to jump in on an uptrend. That's why the same advice we gave earlier, looking at the market at 1030 and at noon, is important for you. And again, going back and tracking how the queues has moved on that weekly chart in the past, backtracking. In fact, I'm going to feature that next week as one of the trainings we're going to put out to all of our members. If you want to be a subscriber, it's easy to do. Go to chartingwealth.com and sign up. Don't forget, if you're interested in moving from freestockcharts.com, which is the layout that we use here, to the paid service that has all the extra benefits, there's three choices there. We get you a $25 discount because of our connections with the folks there, TC2000. Check it out again in the email. Also, if you go to the website and you look under the filings for the Comprehensive Review and Forecast, all the text there, you'll see the link with the discount. Okay. Now, let's keep moving. So we know we have two weekly vertical crossovers to deal with over the course of this next week. We then go to TLT. What's it doing for us? Well, we look at the weekly chart. The biggest down candle yet. Beautiful. We're in a short trade on it right now, which is exactly what we want to have happen. We've actually redrawn a steeper weekly trend line, a steeper line, instead of staying way back here with a much higher line, will get us out potentially quicker if, well not if, when there is a change in trend. So again, things have gone wonderful. What from an, uh, a jumping in point somewhere around 126 to a low, well, let's see what our low is. Oh, beautiful, 119. So literally, we're, we're talking, what, uh, $7 over the court for a $125 ETF, $7 in movement. Now, again, that movement can be taken advantage of either in an inverse fund of TLT or, or with a put position. And again, we want you to practice all those things. Please listen to Inverse Funds, Making Money When Markets Crash. I want you to do that if you've not already heard it. It, it applies somewhat to TLT, where you can go and buy an inverse fund. The problem with the inverse funds is when you have a lack of liquidity. That's mean, that means that you have a large difference between the buy and the ask. People always say, when I teach classes, well, how do I know what the liquidity of this is? I'm like, well, how much can you buy it for and how much can you sell it for? And the bigger the difference, the less the liquidity. Now, the nice thing about the Qs and the NASDAQ 100, well, that's the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, and the S&P 500, 
is that they are highly liquid if you look at their inverse funds. You can find several of them. I would just, uh, I would just suggest if you're going to take a short position on Monday, either buying one of the inverse funds that's just one time instead of two or three or whatever, and or, or, or getting an option uh, on the Qs or the S&P 500 and practicing that. Remember, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to practice with us. So good movement there on the weekly chart on TLT. On the two-day chart, we see just continued down movement. In fact, this latest two-day candle is the biggest that we have seen so far. Again, everything tracking down solid, looking beautiful for us. Let's see if there are any warning signs on that four-hour chart, because remember, all the changes happen there, and there are some warning signs. For the last two days, things have bottomed out at about 118.20 or so. So be aware of that. Things start to turn around and move up. Just be cognizant of it. It Things started to move up back on the 25th. Didn't mean you had to pull the plug as long as movement stays below the two-day trend line and the weekly trend line, and you don't see any warning signs in the weekly or the two-day chart, you can keep riding. And again, you don't have to be afraid to lose a little bit of the gain you never got to stay in a little longer, but you don't want to lose it all. You don't want to lose a substantial portion of it, but you don't want to jump out too soon either. People always ask me, well, what's a hard and fast rule when I get out? Man, there isn't one. That's why you practice this stuff every single day to get good at it. And the more you know about it, the more you get used to TLT and the Qs and the S&P 500 and gold and how they move or how your favorite stocks move, then you start getting a feel for it. It's like knowing your children. You know, it's, that's what they become. And you know their habits and their routines and when they're going to try to fake you out and when they're not. So that's what we encourage you every day to fill out that daily market worksheet once a week as you're listening to the comprehensive review and forecast, you fill out the weekly market worksheet. And every time you do a practice trade, you fill out the trade worksheet. Where are those available? At chartingwealth.com. We, we list them for you every day. We email them out every day with a daily market review to our subscribers. So again, pause this right now. If you're not a subscriber, go to chartingwealth.com, become a subscriber. You'll have all the stuff that we talk about. Plus, we'll tell you how to sign up for the tech service we have that will provide you with a notification every time we have a weekly vertical crossover. It's not often, so we don't fill your, your phone up, but we do give you those warnings and that information, okay? And it's free, and it's simple. You simply text the word charting wealth to the number 33222. It's as easy as that. If you live out of the country, and I have my foreign friends ask all the time, sorry, it doesn't work out of the country, but you're listening to the Comprehensive Review and Forecast. This is where we tell you every week, so you're going to get it wherever you live. Okay, that's where we are on TLT. Our last ETF is gold, and we're going to check out first the, the weekly chart, and we see that the weekly chart is losing its luster. Things haven't crossed over going down yet, but they have fallen off. We had a spinning top for the week ending the 2nd of February, uh, tend, well, a red spinning top, so that means that we have uh, indecision tending down, and of course we saw that fulfilled the following week. We have a red solid uh, hammer maybe with a, uh, a long wick on the bottom and a bit of a wick on top, and again derivative oscillator losing energy, price percent oscillator headed down apparently toward the signal line. What do we see going on on the two-day chart? Well, it is confirmed crossed over. That happened back on Wednesday, the 7th of this last week. And the latest two-day candle ending on Friday the 9th, again, is more downward movement. And again, gold is not tradable at this point with that, with that two-day vertical crossover going down. In other words, it's not anything you would be getting into right now. If you were in it and wanted to keep riding it, it would be hard to justify that with penetration of the two-day well, two flipping over and penetration of the weekly trend line, uh, but there would be no getting into it right now on an up move or a down move because the weekly is still headed up. Remember, that is a strong wave, all things being equal. The market always tends to move in the direction of the largest chart, which is our weekly chart. But what do we see happening on gold? This is interesting. It looks like gold is sort of hitting a bottom here around 124.78. It 
So it and it's been around there since the two-day vertical crossover going down in the afternoon of Wednesday the 7th of February. So again, this is spread over you know two and a half days now. So keep your eye on the four-hour chart. If you've traded that four-hour chart and jumped in somewhere around about uh, 128 or so, and you've ridden it down, again, with a down play on an inverse gold fund or on a put, um, just watch what's happening at the bottom here. And we'll just continue to watch gold. We'll let you know when there's a possible trade again. We don't have one right now. Folks, that's where we are as we end the week, and we go into this next week. So again, we love bringing this to you. We also love hearing from you. You have questions, problems, concerns, and a lot of information in our broadcast today. Let us hear from you. Let us know. Please encourage friends who are interested in trading to join us, uh, to subscribe. And again, it also helps if you subscribe at our YouTube channel. All this information is put out there also, and that helps us with our numbers. Thank you so much, my friends. God bless from the whole team here at Charting Wealth dot com world headquarters.